Hello, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Hello, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Welcome to another exciting tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to create a date countdown timer in your Flutter application. So in the previous video where I showed you how to create a package and also publish it to pub.dev, the package it we did then was date countdown package, which is this one you can you are seeing here. And I also showed you guys how to publish it to pub.dev site for other developers to use as well. So today, I I actually promised you guys that we're going to make a full tutorial concerning the date countdown package, like showing you guys how to implement it into your Flutter application. So today, I decided to make this video, and basically, this is the the pop the dev site and currently it has one like so guys i want you to go ahead and hit this like button to give it a like and also try to share with your friends to use it as well so let's get started so here i have my flutter application running already and basically it's just a simple flutter app see no code can only see the date countdown inside here so okay so what I'm going to do I to implement this stuff first thing I need to import the package into my pub.dev so I'll go back to the site and go to installing so I will have to copy this dependency date countdown and add it inside my pub.dev so um, prospect of the YAML file so I'm going to paste it here and don't forget to run your Flutter Pubcats. Okay, so once this is done, we can go ahead and start the coding. So I'll open my main.dav and also main.dat, sorry and open my emulator. So what I'm going to do to implement this stuff I need to first let me just increase this because this will be showing the counter so I'll just like increase the font size to be something that we can see so we just will have font size okay of 25 okay so don't forget to close this all right and give it a proper format and let's see for it to save all right so we have a bigger test okay so at least this can be seen by anyone so basically what i'm going to be doing in this tutorial i'm going to take i'm going to show you guys two ways of implementing the date countdown one is like having a simple timer that counts down and secondly i'm going to show you how to have how to show multiple timers like displaying them in a list view let's say you're fetching those timer from a json file or you have a list of time and you want to display them so i'm going to show you how to display that with list view the builder and all the time are going to be dynamic they are all going to be unique different from each other and they're going to count down accordingly okay so first and first i'm going to show you how to display a simple countdown timer here and it's going to be a time in the future so the first thing I want to do is to create a basic string. So this is just going to be a string and it's going to be count time. Okay. So basically, uh, for now, I'm going to initialize it with a loading test and replace this stuff with the time. Remember the, this date countdown package returns remove that cost remember this date countdown um, package returns a string like once you pass in the time it returns that time a string instead of any widget it just returns it as a string and we can then change this test dynamically inside our code as the time changes we are going to change like update the count time all right so the next thing i'm going to do is to import okay so what I'm going to do now inside here, yeah, inside my build method, I'm going to have 
I am going to update this count time, so it's going to be okay. Count time, so I will initialize. I will set it to the count, like the countdown. So this is the package. You can see if I press enter, it will be imported automatically. So we have the package date countdown date countdown dot that all right so it has a method inside which is called time left so this time left takes in two property two parameters sorry the first one is a date time okay you can see the first one is a date time the second one is a string so actually this string finish test is like a test that is going to display when the countdown reaches zero so like when the countdown has has elapsed so this test, whatever we pass here, will be the test that is going to be shown to users. So we also have the long date name. So basically, it's set to false. So if you want to have a full date like day D A Y, you set this to false. But you want to have day as D, just a single character. You just leave it the way it is. Set it false, and that will do it. So now what I'm going to do first is to change this finished test. To be something like okay countdown completed or whatever thing you want to use but we'll just go with completed all right and so here since this is a date time i'm going to use date time dot utc so i'm going to put it in a year in the future so this is going to be 2022 2022 all right so save this and we have the countdown so we have this to be 349 days 2 hours 40 minutes 55 seconds so this is when this is the total days that needs to be elapsed before 2022 to come all right so we can also use uh, another method let's say you're fetching you have a string of time and you want to actually display it so instead of using utc you can just use the pass and then you pass it as a string so the time 2021 so i will have it as february okay and it's going to be a day of 10 all right so now we have for us to get from now to february is around 24 days one hour 38 minutes and 59 seconds so right now you can see that this timer is not actually reducing by one by default we want to be updating the value every one second okay so to do that we are going to i'm going to go over to my init i'm going to create an init state so first thing first i will have to create a timer here okay a timer instance and just okay put it as timer then inside the init state, I'm going to initialize that timer. All right. So what I'll do, I'll say timer. Initialize it to timer dot periodic. So here I'm going to specify the duration, like how long, uh, how many seconds or milliseconds, whatever seconds you want to use to uh, to call the timer. So basically, I want it to be one second. So this is a timer. So I want to update it every one second. So what I'll do, I'll just update the whole, like we build the widget, okay, by calling set state. So this is your widget, build the widget and render our time, change it to, to like update it every second. So, okay, and you don't, also don't forget to call dispose as soon as you're done with the timer. So just call timer.close, okay, dot cancel, sorry, not close. Okay, so to actually see this working, I'll have to hot restart the project the app. Okay. Okay, so now let's see it in action. So now you can see every one second the countdown is reducing. And once it reaches zero, the minute is going to reduce as well to 36 okay so once this minute reaches zero the hour is going to reduce once the hour reaches zero the day two will reduce and then the countdown continues like that until we have it to zero and once we have it to zero it's going to change to this test which is complete there all right so i can also do something like let's say we have 
today is what okay today is okay 16 i can have something like this and it's going to show us the actual time that this date is going to reach so basically 16 right yeah uh, let's see okay today is 16 that's why you can see it's showing us completed that is currently we are in the date here is january 16 and we're having 2021 january 16 that's why we are having completed because the day has already elapsed, which is today. So I can also increase this to 17, which is tomorrow. And you see it has one hour to go from now to tomorrow, which is right. Currently, the time is 10, 24. So it has one hour, 35 minutes, 46 seconds for 17, which is January 17 to reach. All right. So this is how you make a simple single countdown so now the next one i'm going to show you guys is how to implement a list like let's let me just assume your data is coming from a json file and you want to show each of those timer in a list view so since i don't have any time coming from a json file i'm going to use a list view to show you guys that example like a list sorry so what i'll do i'll still leave everything as it is with the countdown the init state the timer the countdown timer countdown time so we are going to set that to loading so don't forget to okay let me just set this up so let's keep it so i'm going to change the steps back to loading as it was okay so now what i'm going to do inside here i'm going to create a list of date time actually so it's going to be a list of date time which is the type then I will have it as dates, okay? So the list, the first list I'm going to have is, okay, date time dot pass. So I can just copy this stuff, which is the date in the future. So I'll put it here. So to actually show you guys that this thing is going to be unique, I'll make this one to be 16, which is the current date. And also, there was another method also to do this. So you can use this time dot utc. Okay, date time sorry. Dot utc, and you can just specify the year. So let's say the year is around twenty thirty, and you can also specify the month, which is thirty, and you can also specify the day okay i can just put one there all right so make sure you okay close terminate that so i'll use this date time as well so i think this date time dot pass is the best approach because your data is coming from a json file and basically that json is going to return those time start time as either a dynamic or as a string okay so you can just it's best you pass it inside a date time and then use it inside your countdown timer so i will do increase this one to 22 okay so i think this four is enough but your json might return more than four it might return 50 100 or whatever it returns it's still going to work the same way i'm doing it now so what i'm going to do i will remove this test widget okay so I have to replace this with a list view dot builder, okay? Then the list view dot builder have something called an item count. So the item count is going to be the date dot the length, which is the length of the date. And then I'm going to have item builder. So it has a contest and an index. So basically what I'm going to do is just to return a test so for now i'm just going to have a dummy test and i also want to set the style so that it will be something bigger that we can see okay i'm having a red line somewhere where is it coming from okay sorry i didn't terminate this okay so now i need to increase the size of this basically see where it's showing but it's not nice like that but i guess we can still work with it so if you're working it in, if you're using it in your Flutter application, you should know how to customize all this and just make it display the way you want it to be. It's customizable. So now I'm going to set the test style because I want to increase the the font size. 
So I will set the font size will not for the family. Font size to be 25. All right. Okay. So I think this is good and it's a little bit uh, okay, so this is visible. It's good. It's good. Everything is all right. So now what I'm going to do, I will change this text from this back to the countdown, just the same way we did on that previous one. So I will change it to this count time, sorry, which is this test I created here. Okay, this loading test. So you can see now all the all all the list view items all have loading. Okay, as the string. So what I'm going to do now inside this item builder, that's why I'm going to call this stuff. Okay, so I commented it initially. So now I'm going to copy it and then put it inside my index because I will have to work with this index. Okay, to actually display the date and each of the index should return the timer. So what I'm going to do, this date time instead of having this this test this uh, string here because you can see right now they are all showing the same time because I manually pass this inside. So actually I want to get the time from this list. Let's just assume you're getting it from a JSON file. You want to get all those data, the time from the JSON file. So in my own, in this scenario, which is this video scenario, I want to get mine from this list. So what I'll do, I'll remove this and then I will call my dates. So the date needs an index to show. So I'll just specify this index in here like so okay so now this is it and you can see the first one which currently is around a day in the future which is 2021 february february tomorrow okay january tomorrow okay so we have one hour 29 minutes 43 seconds to get to 17th of january and you can see this one that is showing completed we have 2021 january 16 currently we the date is 16 and we are in January 2021. That's why it's showing completed. So you can also change this to elapse if you want. And uh, it's still going to change from completed to elapse. So then you can do whatever you want to do. Okay. So you also have, we also have this, which is returning 2030. So from now to 2030 is around 4,154 days, 2 hours, 29 minutes and the second skip through is using so we also have here 2022 which is around 365 day 1 hour 28 minutes 50 49 seconds okay so guys that is all for today i hope you really enjoyed the video if you don't please let me know or you can hit the dislike button twice and i will get the message but if you do like this video please give it a thumbs up like liking the video share it and also don't forget to subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video